Greetings, I'm Mark Waterman from JDAC and I'm going to give you a, an introduction to RFID which stands for Radio Frequency Identification Device. A component that uh, many people are already familiar with when it comes to RFID are some of the tags. Uh, there are two types of tags, the first being a uh, passive style tag which this is an image of. Here's a couple of actual tags. Uh, often see these in retail situations embedded in or attached to DVDs, clothing, so on in retail situations. We've all heard alarms go off as someone walks the exit of a uh, retail store and the RFID tags were not deactivated. But they're also having an impact on healthcare, which is growing significantly. This is an example of a patient wristband that uh, actually has an RFID tag uh, embedded into it. It's a little difficult to see, but it's in this area right here. Uh, so again, this is a type that most people are familiar with. But in addition to that, and these again are called uh, passive, there is also what's known as an active RFID tag uh, that come in the shapes and forms, form factors such as uh, uh, types of uh, doorway entry fobs, uh, other style type remotes, tracking RFID sort of wearable bracelets, and so on. The big difference between these two is the fact that these contain a battery which actually powers them, and these do not. They're both known as transponders, uh, and are both read by a transceiver or an RFID reader, but it's actually the reader itself that activates the information, stimulates, if you will, the uh, passive uh, tag, whereas these are battery powered and don't have to have that power from the radio frequency. Uh, they also, uh, as far as the active tags, can contain a great deal more uh, information. They have a larger range, often used for higher value items and so on. Uh, so that's a general summary of the two types of tags uh, that are part of RFID. Okay, so now that we've had a quick look at the two types of RFID tags, let's have a look at a complete RFID system. Again, starting with a tag, in this case, an embedded RFID tag in a patient wristband, Again, located right there in that area would be the, uh, 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 as I say, the tag itself, but you need a transceiver or a RFID reader to then uh, activate that, that tag and read that information. In this particular case, this is JDEX HS1R, which is both a 2D barcode imager as well as an RFID reader. The HS1 or some other type of RFID reader, uh, in the case of healthcare, might be hooked up to anything from a patient monitoring system to infusion pumps and these systems would then potentially pass the red information may actually uh, utilize that information uh, you know there locally but also pass it on potentially to uh, the hospital's enterprise system the healthcare's facility to be processed elsewhere or uh, integrated so that's a quick look at, at, at sort of uh, the basic components of an RFID system. So as I already mentioned, RFID is having quite an impact on the healthcare industry. And this includes areas such as research and test laboratories, pharmaceutical and medical device manufacturers, as well as uh, general hospital and primary care facilities. Um, specifically, the areas that they're uh, being applied is everything from anti-drug counterfeiting and tampering to the expiration and discarded dates of uh, drugs, any return or recall tracking, clinical trial management, as well as general inventory management and supply chain management. When it comes to the active tags, uh, because of their uh, greater power, uh, read distance and um, the need, less need for a more powerful reader. Um, active tags can also be used for medical staff location, equipment location within a hospital or facility, uh, all of which is very helpful, all of these things which are very helpful for uh, supporting patient five rights adherence. So it's really uh, having quite an influence on the healthcare industry.